again, it is a privilege for me to be here to celebrate this Eucharist on this very special feast in the life of the church with you. I'm generally here for confirmations and other such things, and so I've been here many, many times over the years, uh, and it's always been special. And so when Brother Peter asked me, and Peter is a Peter I went to seminary together, though he's one year older than I in terms of coordination. You know, we're the same age, but he was in the class ahead of me. I've always looked up to him, I guess. But uh, the, uh, I said, well, Peter, uh, would you send me something that tells me what you've done that would be helpful? Uh, well, he sent me, they sent me a couple of sheets of paper. If I went through all that has been accomplished for the year of faith, uh, we'd be here for quite a while. And it is, but it's probably no less than I expected of uh, St. Agatha's that they would take uh, the year of faith, and that's what I've been asked to do, is to be here to help celebrate the Feast of Christ the King, which is the closing of the year of faith that Pope Benedict called the whole church to over a year ago. Actually, he announced it two years ago in preparation for a year of prayer of faith with his apostolic letter, Porta Fide, the door of faith. So it was a great privilege for me to, to say yes to, to Father Peter and to be here with you. Uh, I took the time to, over the last few weeks to, whenever I could, I would pick up that letter and read it again or read parts of it again to try to refresh myself with the feeling of it. And there's some things that are very, very important in there, I think, for we who are people of faith, disciples of Christ. First of all, it was, it was announced that the year of faith would begin on October 11th go to this day, the Feast of Christ the King. And it was to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the publication of the Catholic Catechism, which has brought together the essentials of our faith in one form for the sake of the catechizing of the people of God and for the help of the, of the faith of the Church and to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the opening of the Second Vatican Council. And as both popes said, that the Council has lost nothing of its brilliance and of its desire to lead the Church in such a way that we could make known the presence of Christ in the lives of individuals and in the lives of our world. It was to celebrate the greatness of the Vatican Council 50 years. It seems impossible to think that it's gone, that it's already 50 years have passed. Uh, and you might say, well, what's happened? Usually a council takes about 100 years, takes about, about 100 years for it to take its real effect and for people to really understand the council and for it to bear its fruit. So this is half time. That's the way we have to look at it. We tend to be wanting everything in instantaneous forms. This, we're at the halfway mark now, just in terms of what the Vatican Council is, understanding it and making it real in the life of the church. But one of the great things that the council looked for was that the church might learn to read the signs of the times. And I think Pope Benedict was doing that very well. Reading the expression and the needs of our culture, which has gone in so many different directions in these past 50 years. And with the great, uh, so many people searching and not knowing what they're searching for and not knowing how to search for whatever they're looking for. And so it's in that spirit that he writes this apostolic exhortation 
and calls for a year of faith under the title of the door of faith. And he begins by saying that the door of faith is always open. It's never closed. And this isn't the closing of that. This is just the closing of a year of reflection and prayer and trying to think, understand what we're being called to as the church, as a people who are called to evangelize and to make Christ known. And one of the things that the Holy Father declared is that, and it was interesting, you know, Jesus has said to us, as he said to his disciples, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And the Holy Father wrote, we cannot accept that salt should become flat or that light be kept under, kept hidden. And that's the challenge, that faith always be alive and active. And that's what the year of faith was meant to bring to us. And it's a call to the whole church, a call to every single person to walk to the door of faith, the relationship with Christ Jesus as the center of our lives. We call Jesus Christ the King. What a King. Jesus came and turned everything upside down. And that was his purpose of coming. To turn, as it were, all that the world had taken for granted. To turn it and make it different. And so we celebrate Christ as King today. A King who was born, born in poverty. A king who was not served, but came to serve and to give his life. A king whose only crown was one of thorns, and whose only throne in this world was a cross. But a cross from which he reigned and overcame sin and death and turned everything upside down for those who like the thief who said to him, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And it's that faith that we are all asked to profess, that we recognize that we are in need of God's love and forgiveness, God's healing, that he comes to us as a savior. And that for that reason, the door of faith is always open to us and we are being ushered into communion with God, a life of communion with God in our everyday and ordinary things. And that communion that is possible when we cross the threshold of faith and allow what the Holy Father called the transforming grace to touch our hearts. It is a grace that transforms us. And that's what we are always open to. And it is from here that we then become salt of the earth. We become light of the world. When we let the transforming grace of Christ touch our hearts and change us. And it's, we're never, that's a task that's never completed never finally finished, because none of us ever complete the call to holiness. It's always drawing more out of us. And every time we think we haven't finished, we're surprised that God <coughs> can always expect more of us. There is more love, there is more within us, because it is the power of grace working in us, transforming grace. What a powerful image that is. And that the reality is that None of us become saints on our own. We don't become holy by our life of prayer. God makes us holy when we open our hearts. It is the work of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. For God has sent His Son to redeem us. And Jesus has prayed to the Father that He would send us the Holy Spirit as a helper 
as a paraclete, and it is the work of the Holy Spirit to make us holy as Jesus is holy. This is what this year of faith has been about. And it's a journey that began for each of us in our baptism and continues and is called to us over and over again. And it is a call to the whole church, but it's also a call to each individual. This sense of none of us ever makes, lives an act of faith alone. And yet it is a dynamically very personal act to say, I believe. And it's in that that we then become part of the church. You know, in the new translation of the creed, when it first happened, I was a little bit, a little bit disturbed, you know, with some of the some of the language. I found it a little bit difficult. And I always said, I always liked when we stood and said, we believe. If you want to know, if you want to have a greater faith, 
that lose yourself in Christ and calls for abandoning ourselves over in faith to Christ. We, this is the commitment we call to. Beyond, beyond this day, we call to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus Christ, calling us to be faithful, to be missionaries, to be disciples, sharing the mission of the whole church. Mary is the one we follow as an example. By faith, Mary responded to God's call when it was so difficult. She, yet she was able to say yes by faith. The disciples, the apostles, left everything to follow Jesus Christ. They left whatever they had. By faith, the apostles went throughout the world and began to preach Jesus was risen. By faith, the disciples formed the very first communities that would gather to celebrate the Eucharist and make Christ's presence in the world. By faith, you and I gathered here in the power of the Holy Spirit to, as we offer up the body of God in Christ in praise to God the Father. It is by faith that we all do that. So we stand here like the one on the cross beside Jesus. And it is our prayer as we say day, day by day, Lord, remember me.